Good morning. Welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Bergeron here on Humanity Heal Live Facebook. Thank you, each one of you, for, for being present here and now during these amazing times we are going through. There are not a, a great abundance of words that I can say other than I love you. And that is my heart, knowing that it explains everything. It's all about our love for each other, our love for the planet, and our love for who we are as amazingly wonderful being that we are just beginning to understand once again. Nilo Puta Ika, good morning. Nida Keef, good morning. Welcome to this talk that's been named uh, this morning Wind, Rain, and Viral Isolation. And the reason for that is this morning, all night, there were high winds and heavy rains at times that uh, allowed me to tap into raw nature of life during this time where many of us are feeling isolation uh, through collective humanity uh, dealing with the pandemic and I live on the southwest coast of Maine which is influenced by called nor'easters where the wind comes off the northeast coast and whips back it flows west it's a circle it's a vortex and it whips back around off the ocean onto the land. And it's an amazing process that ancient mariners uh, were aware of this vortex of energy in the Atlantic between uh, Europe and America. So this morning, um, as I wrote this morning, the, the, my show notes was a run to the sounds of wind and rain out of the Northeast from a storm slowly over the North Atlantic Ocean is a true gift. I'm reminded of ancestors who sailed from continent to continent without knowing exactly what they might be facing, holding in their hearts the hope of a new life in which they would no longer be persecuted for their beliefs. And I say that to each and every one of you as your fears have been brought to your attention again. Fears that may, you may even be aware of where they began or how they're going to unfold or if they're going to unfold in positive or negative ways. So for each one of you my love around the world where you are whether you're having wind or rain or just feeling isolated so what I wanted to share with you is that and I open the um, that whatever it is box up at the top of this page is fear is much like wind and rain if you deeply sit with it it can arise out of nowhere a devastating form forcing us to run for cover or hide in our basements until it moves on this is what fear does to it stops us. All our dreams, all our visions, all our hopes stop. 
even if just for a few moments, it stops. The fear stops our rational thinking. It's a interference in our energy. Humans have used fear for thousands of years to control other humans. Even in these days, if you look at your own um, news reports, information that you're receiving from our leaders and the people we look up to to learn and uh, create stability. Death fear is definitely being exaggerated to force us to isolate ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that. Uh, this pandemic is serious on many levels. And we need to, if nothing else, honor each other by doing the best we can with what we have in order to remind us that we are the ones who will overcome the virus not our governments. They can only be a sense for us. So as I thought about this this morning, I, I started dwelling on our ancient ancestors. They were very isolated around the world, the same world that you and I are distanced from, Europe, Americas, Africa, the Middle East. They were tribal communities and scattered across our Earth Mother. Just as we are, except we have closer proximity and we have conscious awareness of each other. They are very much more isolated than we are. Now, even as individuals in our own homes and apartments, yet new from the wind and the rain that the wind and rain that was coming was a messenger. And they would actually feel somewhat isolated and it went for long stretches of time, not from another tribe or each other, but from what they were able to do to provide daily healthy sustenance for themselves during these long periods. It wasn't so much fear that was the problem. It was their inability to understand and provide for themselves in ways that they normally done when these long storms weren't plaguing them. But in that same process, storms, that wind, and rain, they also knew it was a gift for them because they knew that with the rain there would be no water to grow their crops. Without the wind, there was no wood to gather, dead wood to burn, to cook their food. So they had a symbiotic relationship with the wind on the rain, as they did with all the elements of our planet. Our problem now is that we have been distanced from that. We have been sheltered in little boxes, and we have these vehicles that we drive around, and we 
have these jobs that create money so that we can pay somebody else to do something for us or to provide us with things. We are no longer sustainable in many ways. And we know that. We all know that we are codependent on each other. And so when these storms, be it virus, viruses or whatever, come upon us, these plagues, these, it could be the locusts. I mean, we, we're, we're not hearing about the locusts, at least, damaging the crops. But that's creating fear for them. Wherever you are, the, the poison water, where you have no clean water to drink, is not any different than this this virus. All of these things are intentionally in place to awaken us. Awaken us to the limitations we have to fully provide a healthy sustenance for ourselves, our families, and each other. We are now collective, as a collective experiencing all of this. No separation from any of us. Whether we're barefoot on land and have no internet, or we're in a high rise building with a billion dollars in our treasure chest, we are all now. This is great equalizer, the rain, wind. So let's look at what we're working through now as a process in which we can grow, in which we can inspire each other, in which we can rebuild trust in ourselves. We've lost the ability to trust ourselves because we no longer individually have the ability or skills to survive without a superstructure, a superstructure that we call government. And we've given away all of our, our individual and unique beingness this government in return for what they claim is safety and protection. And as we can see right now, they're just as vulnerable as we are, as a construct, as a whole philosophical mental construct, what we call government is just as fragile as we are. The greatest powers in the world are now affected by a non living concept is deeply deleted by a minuscule little whatever it is cellular structure, bacterium. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor. is expressing our connections right now. There is no separation. So with that said, that's what I awakened this morning from the wind, the message from the wind and the wind was to be calm. Know you're safe. Know that this tool will that each of us have an ability to trust ourselves. And the time is right now to renegotiate with our minds, with our fears, with our traumas, with whatever is going on in this illness. In this stillness, renegotiate, clean out, 
remove, replace, restructure who we truly are as a being and divine beings created here on this amazing planet, Mother Earth. So speaking of Mother Earth from a, a galactic point of view, here we are on Mother Earth, and here is this beautiful galactic being they've called I Zwicky 18. It's this very small, small universe, our galaxy. And at first they thought it was a baby galaxy. And this is the wisdom we have as humanity. We, humanity, we look at things and we judge it, we compare it, and we analyze it, and we try to, you know, figure it all out. But in reality, it's not a child universe. It's a full-grown universe. A galaxy with a new appearance. And the image of the card really is this. It's a sacred space meditation card from Ellen von Linden, which I love. The word is growth. Growth. The world is my home. The universe is my backyard. And here is plenty of space for me to grow and change. What a powerful message. As some days feeling trapped in these four walls. The universe is my backyard. And here is plenty of space to grow and change. So the crisis we are now facing, again, is more than a virus. It's one where we're coming to face with um, great change. I'm realizing that we have taken for granted some amazing wonders in life. Some of which we created and destroyed. Not just the ones that were here already before came and have destroyed, but wonderful things that we have done as a human race. High points in our, our not only our conscious evolution, but our physical evolution and our ability to take who we truly are as the divine wizards, if you will, with great ability create great structures to understand philosophies that are just truly mind-boggling and yet still not honor each other still pick out little each other to attack to demean create this ladder of separation, of power, greed. So, much like the wind and rain, when it's overzealous, it's it, and, and does change the face of Mother Earth. Right now, we are be all to change the face of Mother Earth. Not through technology being forced into things like 5G and harmful energies that can be used as weapons. In order to continue the filtering of and profit of a group of humanity, a small percentage of humanity. We are now having to look at everything we do. 
everything we think. And at the same time that this is going on for us who are fortunate enough to have uh, computers, there are still individual tribes around this world which have no concept or idea of what we're experiencing. They have chosen to live in isolation and not join in this modernization of humanity. They live in the same traditional ways. And have no concept of this current pandemic. Yet they too, like us, can become victims of a world that we have co-created intentionally in this way, but as a result of our inability to not pay attention, closer attention to what we're all doing and what we're all agreeing to. For the same those who are reaping the benefit of distress. That's my day. That's what water, the rain, the water, and the wind the, have presented me with this. And so I ask each one of you to realize that this current relation is an opportunity, an opportunity to dive deep into your own ability to survive without taking or forcing or disengaging with others. To be more like our ancestors, realize that I have a local tribe with whom I'm connected. And to honor that as being a part of that and knowing that one of us need to be respected and honored. And many of us need to be forgiven. Many of us need to be forgiven. And those of us who are often able to see greater good in the world, it's our responsibility to forgive them, to be more, more compassionate and loving. Second card I pulled today from uh, Esther Gary Hicks and regarding the the uh, law of attraction and it's moods are indicators of my emotional set points. So what are we going through? Many different We're happy, we're depressed, we're angry. Every emotion is coming up right now for us. It may only last a few minutes and for the anger and the, the pain can be very disabling and not focused outwardly. Please keep a wrap on that. Know that you're not alone in that that it's natural to be experiencing going through what we're going through. The ability to point our finger at others and, and blame and to cries. They're all human traits at our best. None of us are overly um, through that process yet. The ones are a little more able to are here to help 
helps get through that. I go through it just like you do. I reach out through talks and through my entrances, messages to encourage them to see the brighter picture, not allow the fear to overcome. So, so the card from uh, uh, and, uh, Jerry Hicks reads, when you can focus on any thought, comes increasingly easy to continue to focus on it because the law of attraction is making more thoughts like it available to you. And so emotionally speaking, you are developing a mood or you are achieving a habitual vibrational groove so to speak, or what they call a point. Find your set points. Find the set points you created in your past. Find the mood that you're going through. And ask yourself, is this real? Or is this an illusion? that's attached to a concept that I was taught to believe in my earlier experience. And if it was, stop attracting it to you. Take the set point and cut it cord. Cut the cord to these old patterns. Cut the to all of these old beliefs and start to look at yourself as the wind, wind the rain coming at you to clear away, to blow away, rinse away, if you will, all this that no longer resonates with who you truly are in your hearts. I'm not my show notes. I, I have them here and I, I poke in and out. But what you're hearing is from my heart. And my heart has always made me a dreamer. I've always been a dreamer. Not that I haven't been a complainer or a whiner or fee fearful. Uh, not that I had chosen separation or illusion. We are the dreamers, not the whiners, not the fearful, not the hoarders. So we gather and shelter in our homes with some very basic and minimal comfort or necessities. I want you to please understand you are loved and you are blessed. That even in isolation, be it literal or figurative, self-imposed or mandated, you are the ancestors of the future generations. Think about that. You are the ancestors of the future generations of humanity. You are the wind and are the rain that is clearing away what is no longer beneficial for the whole of humanity. It's your strength and power, not limited, but intensifying with this, firstly, to get through all these past set points and see our errors clearly and redefine the nature of who we are going to be and how we're going to play out 
in the history of humanity. As I close, I wanted to um, read something here from the first book of Israel, which is a great white brotherhood book. And it was a random page, and I didn't want to read the whole article, but the, the chapter is Treasures in Heaven. So I want to read this to you. Once awakened to a realization of of power, the soul has no limitation. How much greater it is than the body is constantly seen. Some of the majestic figures in history were physically weak. Some of the world's sweetest singers have been housed in the humblest of environments and kept on the scantiest food. Some of the most un un heroic and useful lives have never been without daily physical suffering and torment. You are here in the material world, my beloved, not to be subject by matter, but to master, to overcome. In light and love, I offer you each great peace as we connect our hearts, which have always known the way of the dream, and to now recognize all elements within us that will continue to guide us through all the darkness, whether self imposed or inflicted by others. I hope my message and connection to the elements this morning who awakened me with their beautiful song of life give you a sense of hopefulness in your own personal uh, drama. I love you. I do. I respect you. I am you. You are me. Together, we are unity. We have never not been, except in the illusion which we have all created. Now is that. I'm complete, whole, and I love you. Please be careful out there. Honor your life, for it is as precious as yours. We'll see you next week. Be safe. Bye-bye.